Végülsne. Jaya Rara Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janavala Bha Kedi Hari Jayan Gopi Janavala Bha Kedi Hari Yashora Nandana Bhattajana Ranjana Yashora Nandana Bhattajana Ranjana Jamuna Tiravanachari Yamuna Tiravanachari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Mr. Pad Paramahansa his divine grace, Shula AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Iskan BBT founder of Charja, Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai O Mishnupad Paramahansa Paravajaka Charja, Ashtotar the Sri Srimad. His divine grace, Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai. Ananda Koti Vaishnava Niki Jai. Nama Charja Shila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Goranga. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya <coughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya On this 22nd day of July, 2024, in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are in chapter 9, entitled The Most Confidential Knowledge, text 31 on page 413. Chipram, Bhavati, Dharmatma, Shashvat, 
Shantim Nagachati Kaunteya Patijanihi Name Bhakta Panashati Chipram Bhavati Dharmatma Shaswat Shantim Nagachati Kaunteya Patijanihi Name Bhakta Panashati Chipram Bhavati Dharmatma Shaswat Shantim Nagachati Kaunteya Patijanihi Name Bhakta Panashati Chipram Bhavati Dharmatma Shaswat Shantim Nagachati Kaunteya Patijanihi Name Bhakta Panashati Chipram Bhavati Dharmatma Shaswat Shantim Nagachati Kaunteya Patijanihi Name Bhakta Panashati Chipram Bhavati Dharmatma Shaswat Shantim Nagachati Kaunteya Patijanihi Name Bhakta Panashati Chipram Bhavati Dharmatma Shashwat Shantim Nagachati Kaunteya Patijanihi Name Bhakta Panashati Chipram Bhavati Dharmatma Shashwat Shantim Nagachati Kaunteya Patijanihi Name Bhakta Panashati Go ahead Shashwat Shantim Nagachati Kaunteya Patijani Name Bhakta Panashati Chipram Bhavati Dharmatma Shashwat Shantim Nagachati Kaunteya Patijani Name Bhakta Panashati. Anyone online? Tapas? Guess not. Okay, Chipram, very soon, Bhavati becomes Dharma Atma, righteous, Shashvat Shantim, lasting peace, Nagachati attains, Kaunteya, O son of Kunti, Patijanihi, declare, na, never, may, my, Bhaktaha, devotee, Panashati, perishes. Translation, Krishna says to Arjun, He quickly becomes righteous and attains lasting peace. O son of Kunti, declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. So it really makes sense. We need to read the previous translation. Even if one commits the most abominable action, if he is engaged in devotional service, he is to be considered saintly because he is properly situated in his determination. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me read that again. Even if one commits the most abominable action, if he is engaged in devotional service, he is to be considered saintly because he is properly situated in his determination. He quickly becomes righteous and attains lasting peace, O son of Kunti. Declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. Purport. This should not be misunderstood. In the seventh chapter, the Lord says that one who is engaged in mischievous activities cannot become a devotee of the Lord. One who is not a devotee of the Lord has no good qualifications whatsoever. The question remains then, 
How can a person engaged in abominable activities, either by accident or by intention, be a pure devotee? This question may justly be raised. The miscreants, as stated in the seventh chapter, who never come to the devotional service of the Lord, have no good qualifications, as is stated in Srimad Bhagavatam. Generally, a devotee who is engaged in the nine kinds of devotional activities is engaged in the process of cleansing all material contamination from the heart. He puts the Supreme Personality of Godhead within his heart, and all sinful contaminations are naturally washed away. Continuous thinking of the Supreme Lord makes him pure by nature. According to the Vedas, there is a certain regulation that if one falls down from his exalted position, he has to undergo certain ritualistic processes to purify himself. But here there is no such condition, because the purifying uh, process is already there in the heart of the devotee, due to his remembering the Supreme Personality of Godhead constantly. Therefore, the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, should be continued without stoppage. This will protect a devotee from all accidental fall downs. He will thus remain perpetually free from all material contaminations. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyanandana Shalakaya Chakshu Unmilitam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Sri Dupal, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara, the disciplic succession. So, these uh, two verses, 30 and 31, are famous because Krishna is giving a, uh, a very liberal uh, statement here. That Abhichet Sudaracharo, even if one, Sudaracharo means very sinful. It's not just a little transgression. Even the most, the most abominable action, if he is engaged in devotional service, he is to be considered saintly because he is properly situated in his determination. So during that time when he's committing the most abominable action, he's obviously not engaged in devotional service. So the idea that this is a, uh, a, a, an unusual, uh, exceptional deviation from the engagement in pure devotional service, which means all your activities are auspicious and pure and saintly and connected with Krishna. So, but it may happen, as Prabhupada says, because of conditioning or whatever, that that may, may happen. Well, if one is sincere in uh, regretting it strongly and praying to Krishna for forgiveness and purification, and if he then is engaged with more determination in devotional service, this reminds me of like the nectar of instruction, because there we find uh, uh, essential instruction. There's 11 verses in the whole book, and so each one is very important. So he begins by uh, defining the, the basic characteristics of one who is going to be a leader, going to be an acharya or a guru. Vacho vegam manasakrodha vegam jihva vegam muralopasta vegam. Uh, so he's saying there, there's these, these subtle and gross vegas, which means pushing from our conditioning, from within our body and within our mind. So the urge to speak. I remember when I first read this book, I was, I think, living in New York, in the big temple there. You may have heard this legendary temple in 56th uh, Street in Manhattan, 11 stories. I was, I was uh, fortunate to live there for a couple of years in the devotional service. So I immediately thought of uh, bus rides because getting around New York is either a bus or a train, you know. So I get on the buses and all you hear is uh, everyone's jabbering, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, there's two people who know each other, they're going to be talking about something. You know? So that's the urge to speak. It's a very powerful uh, urge. And if it's not, uh, generally speaking, it's not Krishna Kata coming out there. It's, it's mundane talk. And there's, there's one verse that, that just stuck in my mind when I first read it in the Bhagavatam, the third canto. And it's heavy. It's heavy because it's Brahma's prayers. I think it's the prayers for creative energy or maybe the description of the kingdom of God. There's two main sections of prayers there. And it's interesting to note that it always uses this Brahma Samhita meter. The one in the Brahma Samhita, 
Chintamani Pakata Sadma Sukalpa Vriksha Laksha. That's a that's a certain meter. And sure enough, he used the same meter in these prayers. So he says, Yanna Bajanka the Badorba Chanano Varat Chinbandi Nibishyaku Katama Digni Yastushuta Hatavagani Bharata Saras Tang Tang Chapanja Sadhane Shutamaksu Handa. Now when a verse ends in the verse in the word hanta, which means the last, you know, that's a pretty heavy verse, you know. Even Brahma is lamenting here. So what it means is, uh, he's, he's describing in this verse who doesn't get to go to Vaikuntha. There's an, uh, in, pre, in some subsequent verses, he describes who goes to Vaikuntha, pure devotees. But this is like, who doesn't go? So, yanna vajanti, they don't go, vajanti. Who? Agabhidha, Ratana Agabhidha is a name for Krishna, means he who destroys, this, destroys sin. In your heart, you know. It can also mean the killer of Agasura, but in this context, I think it's just a general principle. So Krishna is Aga Bidha. You know, if we take him in our heart, we serve him, then this, our sin will be, sinful reactions, what to speak of sinful activities, will be erased from our character. Very important. Rachananuvada means a, con, uh, a construction of words. In other words, any, any oral thing or reading, you know, this is a, 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 a creation of words. Rachananuvada. Chinvanti. Uh, this is, in those days, there wasn't much printing going on, so you're hearing Anuvada, it's the speaking of these words that have nothing to do with that destroyer of sin. In other words, it's mundane talk, what we call Pajalpa. Trinvandiye Anyavishaya means other topics other than that which deals with Krishna, the kill, and destroyer of sin. Rachananuvada, Trinvandiye Anyavishaya, Kukata, it's called Kukata. Now we know that. Uh, we want to try to always be um, thinking of and speaking and hearing Krishna Kata. So the opposite of Krishna Kata is Kukata. Kukata means bad. And what's the result? Matigni. It destroys your intelligence. Yastu Shuta, those who hear such vibration, Yastu Shuta Hatabhagaya, it destroys all their good fortune. Nibir uh, Saras, a very interesting phrase. Atasaras means takes away your interest in the essence of life. Saras is the, is the essence, and Atta means to withdraw, to take away. And then, the fourth, fourth line, Tang tan chapan tashadane shudamaksahanta, those topics that you listen to uh, cast you down into the darkness of ignorance and to a hellish existence. Alas, says Brahma. So it's pretty heavy. Now, I guess to share that in another set of prayers, Brahma had several several prayers that I memorized as soon as I read them 50 years ago. And one that really sticks in my mind, because he speaks twice about being able to, in this case, smell the fragrance of the Lord Christ's lotus feet by hearing. And in subsequent words, you're able to see him by hearing. You see? By hearing the pure vibrations, the actual image or even the sensation of, 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 of smell can be there. They had five senses. This is the power of Krishna Gita. So in this one he says, ye tu, and it can be placed after two means on the other hand, right? But those who, ye tu tradiya, so this is Brahma actually praying directly to Krishna in, 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 in trance. Ye tu tradiya chadanam jakosha gandam jigrantikana bevaray shutivata nitam uh, so this I memorized when I was younger, so it's stuck in there pretty good. <laughs> so he says, but on the other hand, uh, they're not really placed that way, but you can place this one afterward. On the other hand, those who, yetu who, who smell the fragrance of your lotus feet, carried on the wind by uh, uh, the Vedic sounds being carried on the wind. Vidya Chadanam Jakosha Gandham. Gandham means the fragrance of your lotus feet. Jigranti Karna Bibarai Shuti Vatanitam. They smell it by hearing through the ears. The, the Vedic sounds describing you, describing your lotus feet, you see. So what do they do? Bhaktiagvahita. They accept, they embrace in their hearts devotion to you. Bhaktiagvahita Chadanak to your lotus feet. Uh, and those who continue to do that, you're never separated from their hearts. You see? So that's one choice that we have. And this is what the Bhagavad Gita is. Words spoken by Krishna, or words spoken about Krishna, by his great devotees in the Bhagavatam, by so many devotees like Brahma, Narada, and so forth, or by great devotees like Prabhupada. 
those are also completely purifying. If you hear them, you can also read them, but it's even more powerful to hear them, then the purification takes place. Just as we know, Cheto Darbana Marjana, the very first words of the Shikshastika, describe the power of Sankirtan, hearing that holy name and chanting the holy name. Hearing the holy name and chanting the holy name. And the more that you focus the mind on the sound, because the mind is, you know, the material mind is saying, are you kidding? I heard that one already. Let's think of something else, right? <laughs> the mind has a, it's called the chariot of the mind, right? <laughs> uh, what is that verse, the chariot of the mind? You know rata, like rata yatra? <laughs> so there's a chariot of the mind as well as the chariot that carries Lord. So this is a prayer by Yamuna Charya in his Stotra Ratna. You know what Stotra Ratna means? A series of jewel-like verses. Probably like, love this verse, he would chant it often. Oh my Lord, bhavanta me bhavanuchadandarantarak prashanta nikshe samanodatantarak. When will that time come? Kadaham I can take a Nitya King. When I will be your one pointed servant, Nitya Kinkara, humble servant. And Paharshi Yasyami, rejoice, Paharshi Yasyami Sanata Jivadam. Rejoice to have such a wonderful master. You know, Sanata Jivadam. When a, a lady is married, she is Sanata, right? She is, uh, yeah. So we want to be Sanata with Krishna, that he's our, our eternal master, where he's eternal servant, which is our constitutional position. And we'll be, and he said, I'll be, I'll be so ecstatic. When will that day come? When my mind, the chariot of the mind, stops, you know. And I always keep you in my mind, and I hear and chant about you, serve you without breaking uh, or interruption. And uh, I'll be very, very happy at that point to have you as a protector and my my master. So. So now, back to our verses here. So, so here's the, describing a, ver, a devotee. Now, Prabhupada recalls text 30, which is the previous verse, which describes sudaracharo, a very sinful activity you may perform. But it says sadur. One could, I, I say that one should can still consider someone, a, 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 that person a sadhu, who, who is basically undeviating in his devotion to me. But somehow or other, he may make a mistake and, you know, the circumstances and commit something that he then, he or she immediately regrets and prays for forgiveness and goes on with devotion with more determination. That's what's being described here. So that person should be still considered a sadhu, sabyag bhavasitohisa, uh, sabyag, uh, completely considered saintly because he's properly situated in determination. So this is, this is a, a very wonderful expression personally by Krishna of his uh, great mercy for his devotees. In other words, so many lifetimes we've spent without a touch of devotional service, different species, different planet, different circumstances, you know, suffering and eventually taking rebirth and getting and all this, going on and on and on and on. So now there comes a point where somehow we become attracted to Krishna by the mercy of the great devotee, the Srila Prabhupada, who took the trouble to bring the word to us in our own language you know, in, in English, and it can start in the West and then it grew from there. So when Krishna sees, we're, we're little, like little children, we're, you know, trying to reach him, but we fall down a little bit and get, get you know, struggle. So he's looking for our sincerity, and he's willing to give us, you know, a second chance like that, you know, and, and, and so much help. And if we accept the help and we, you know, stop, we don't make it a habit to do these activities, it's not, then they can be wiped away. And, you, and, and then he says, chipram. Chipram means quickly. The verse today. Bhavati dharmatma. Dharmatma means when the soul is, always, is fixed in dharma. You see? When, when by your determination and your, your practice you become fixed. Dharmatma. Shastra chanti. He becomes very peaceful. Nigachati. Uh, and then he says, Konteya, you, you announce it. Konteya pradejani that my devotee never perishes. So it perishes doesn't mean that the body is not going to perish. Of course the body will perish. But what will won't perish if we're sincere is our devotion to Krishna. And it'll, and it'll continue to become more intense and more pure as time goes on. Either we'll get, go back to God in this body, which is possible if we're really determined, or in a near future life. No more of these hundreds and thousands and millions of births. You know, we can see the end of it. And, and if we determine we can do it in one life, or at least we'll make progress and then take it up in the next life. 
So why does Krishna say, uh, you, de you, de you declare it, you declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. Who can answer that question? Why doesn't he just declare it like he declares everything else? Well, in the, in the verse we read today, 31, he, he that person who is uh, deviated but is sincerely still practicing, he quickly becomes righteous and attains lasting peace. O son of Kunti, declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. Instead of Christians say, I declare, it, I declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. You know why? Because Krishna sometimes lies. That's part of his pastime. <laughs> Didn't he lie to his mother? He said, I didn't do anything. <laughs> or uh, there's that pastime on the battlefield where he told Yudhishthira to lie. You remember that? Yudhishthira was known as never telling a lie. And so uh, they, they wanted to try, you know, they had to try to, uh, there was this great warrior on the other side who had taught Arjun and had, had trained uh, Yudhishthira in military arts. Um, Dronacharya? Dronacharya. So, uh, he had a son named Ashwatthama, who, who later on <laughs> became a rascal. He was, you know, it's the Mahabharata War was originally f being fought according to the strict rules. But as time went on, they were breaking the rules. And was it Ashwatthama who killed the sons of Jobadi? You, know, you know, the young boys... How, why they were on the battlefield, I don't know. But anyway, they were there, and he went and killed the young boy when they're sleeping. Terrible, terrible sin. And then after the whole battle was practically done, and the last surviving uh, 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 descendant of, of the, in, the, in the clan was there in the, in the person of Parigat, within the womb of uh, Uttara. Uh, and... and uh, so Ashwatthama, he wanted to, to end the clan, you know, what is it, the Kurus. And so he threw this Brahmastra, which is like an atom bomb, but you can personalize it, you know, which is like, I don't know how that happens, but it's, it's very huge. So uh, the, the, uh, he's throwing, and so, in the, so Uttara comes running to Krishna, he's standing on the battlefield. It's, the battle is over, basically. And he said, oh, Krishna, Krishna, please save me, save me. Uh, the the, the Ashwatthama Ashwat has thrown this Brahmastra and is threatening my, my uh, fetus in the womb. You know? So Krishna enters in and he protects uh, the, the Purikit in the womb. And so that's why he got the name Purikit. Because he saw Krishna in the womb and he was saved. And so the rest of his life he's looking for, for that Krishna. Where is he? You know? So that Purikit means to look, to observe, you know. <laughs> So anyway, uh, this very, very Ashwatthama is, uh, you know, he's, he's a dharma. So, so they, they went and he told Arjun to go and, and uh, capture him. Arjun was able to, ca to counteract the Brahmastra also by his own Brahmastra. And then they went and got Ashwatthama. And so I'm, but, but back to the point is that during the battle, uh, uh, there is there is the, um, the, the the Dronacharya could not be be killed unless he thought his there was one to discourage him by th saying that his son was dead Ashwatthama was dead he was killed but you just say I can't lie I never told a lie in my life now that was a sin <laughs> because he wasn't doing what Krishna wanted him to do you know so he didn't go to hell but he had to see hell right isn't that he kind of had to see hell which is so anyway, Krishna, he's not bound by any laws. You know, he, he, he makes the laws. So for certain reasons, for his leela, whatever, he will sometimes you know, tell a lie. Or, so he, he know, the people know that. Therefore, he says, you, you declare it, Arjun, because they, they know that I will keep your word true. You see? <laughs> it's very sweet, actually. Count the Yepa Dejani in my book so Krishna is saying, okay, but Prabhupada makes, makes it clear in the purport here that uh, this does not justify just breaking the rules, you know, uh, by some whim. The point is, this is an accidental fall down and some circumstances happen and, suddenly you, and you're deviated. And the first thing you do, you regret it like anything, you pray to Krishna, please forgive me, you know, and, and, 
and and please give me the strength not to do it again, you know. And and with, if you're really praying sincerely, then you'll be able to do that, and Krishna will forgive you. It's not, it's not you know, whereas if you're praying for some material thing, you're, you're following the Vedas, but it's the karma kanda section of the Vedas, you know, and you make a little mistake, then you, may, you, you won't get what you want, or you may get just the opposite. There's an instance in the, in the Bhagavatam where this... Um, it's Chitra Ketu pastime. And he's, uh, it starts with, with, with Indra offending his spiritual master. Indra always seems to let you know, the circumstances go to his head you know, and make a big mistake, right? Didn't he make a big mistake? He tried to, to drown. The, <laughs> that's what this whole temple is about. But it's not the first time. He has a whole bunch of eyes on his body. And those who know this pastime, you know the pastime. I'm not going to tell it. But that's, that's, that's a punishment for being uncontrolled, you know. So he keeps doing that. And, and uh, so, so, so he, but, he, but when he, after he does that, he prays to Krishna, like he comes in the, in the Gopadana Leela. And it's, it, Krishna, he's so contrite and so forth, you know, so he gets his post back and this and that. So in the case of, of uh, this pastime, he offends his Brahaspati, his, his spiritual master, I think it's Brahaspati. He's on his throne and they're glorifying him and you know, he's sitting there and Brahaspati walks in, he's the spiritual master, and Indra doesn't even get off his throne. So Brahaspati turns on, a, on, on, on his heel and walks out. And then he says, oh my well, God, what have I done? He gets off the throne, but he can't find him. You see, now they don't have a guru and so now they're weakened. So the, so the, uh, the, the, dem- the demon says, oh, let's take advantage of it, you know. <laughs> So there's a real problem. So in order, uh, and the demigods, the demons do, I think, a victim and so forth, and they go to, to Krishna and pray to him, not for pure devotion, but they pray for some way to please get our kingdom back. So he gives them this, this really gruesome instruction. He says, okay, go to Dadichi, who's this great sage, and you just ask him for his body. And then if he gives it, then take from his bones and you make a, a, another uh, uh, thunderbolt for Indra, and it'll be invincible. You know, so they go to the Dichi, and they pray to him. He says, and first he kind of, I don't know, I want to say he's teasing them, but he says, "Are you kidding?" <laughs> and then he says, "All right, no problem," because he's completely detached. You know, I'll go back to get it. So, he, so sure enough, they get the you know the body, and they make take the bones, and they create this this uh, new thunderbolt for Indra, which is really very strong. You know, and it goes on like that. And eventually, uh, there's this whole pastime. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't, I forget all the details of it. But this uh, Chitra Ketu, he, uh, yeah, this is part of it. This, he, he had, he uh, was a king with many, 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 many wives. But somehow he couldn't have a son. They weren't getting pregnant. Oh, he was all distraught, you know. So I think it was Narada who came down, and. Uh, Blessed him to have a son. So he find, finally his favorite wife gets pregnant, you know. And she, and, uh, and, she, and she gives birth to this beautiful little boy. And so uh, he's so happy and, you know, and, and, and describing. But all the other wives, then, then he started favoring that wife now because she was the one who had the child. And all the other wives felt neglected. So they killed the child, believe it or not. So then, so actually Narada told him that the boy would be known as Harsha Shoka, which means jubilation lamentation. So he figured out, yeah, it'll be like some ordinary kid, you know, who gives you some joy, but then he'll do something mischievous like that. He didn't take it so seriously. But that was, he was jubilant that he was, was, we, that he was born and a beautiful little boy, and then he was totally distraught that he was then killed. So Narada comes back with, I think, another uh, sage, I think Parvat Muni, and uh, he brings the boy back to life, and the boy starts speaking the uh, transcendental philosophy. Who is my father, actually? I've had so many births, you know, like that. So Chitra Ketu becomes uh, somewhat detached, and he gets a um, mantra from Narada, I believe, in order to, to chant, and then he'll get re- God realization. You know? So he becomes very advanced, and he has these prayers, and, and then he starts flying around in this, this tra- transcendental airplane. You know, and he try goes up to the Himalayas and he sees Lord Shiva, with Parvati, 
and all these sages surround him. You know. But Parvati is on his lap, you know, and he, he laughs. What's this? They're in much of all the sages, you know. So, so Shiva doesn't mind, but Parvati was angry. So she curses him to become a demon. Oh. But, but by that time, Chichiketu was so detached, said, okay, whatever, whatever. And he kept flying, you know. So anyway, um, Indra, in order, so then go back to Indra. So he, he needed, they needed to get another guru or another instructor so that they could get, you know, get more power to combat the demons. So they go to this, uh, this uh, sage named Tvashta, and they beg for his son, was known to chant, chant very nice mantras and so forth. So, okay, this Vishwarup, okay, you know, he happened to have three heads, okay? And, uh, but he was, <laughs> so he's chanting for them and everything. But then Indra was hiding behind a pillar and he was listening to the chants and he noticed, that, well, wait a minute, some of these chants are not to the, the gods or to, to God, but they're to the demons. Because he had his mother, in his mother's line, there was some sense. So Indra, he, Hare Krishna, he, uh, he flies off the handle and he cuts off all his heads. He had three heads. I won't get into that. And uh, so he's dead and gone. And then trust us, says, oh, what is this? I advised my son to become the, the, the uh, preceptor of the, de the demigods, and now they do this. So he wants to perform a sacrifice to invoke a demon who will kill Indra. You see? So he gets, he gets all the paraphernalia together and it's, it's some mantras from the Vedas, whatever it is. But he's so angry that he chants one syllable different. This is why it's, I, some, you know, I'm not going to say anything about the chanting here. You're trying your best and it's all transcendental. <laughs> but Sanskrit is a very precise language. And if you don't chant it just right, you don't, won't get what you're looking for. So he chants one syllable wrong in his anger and, you know, and instead of getting a demon who, who, who will kill Indra, he gets a devotee dressed as a demon who Indra will kill and send back to Godhead. And, that, <laughs> and that's Chitukator. He was cursed because he insulted Shiva, cursed by poverty, to take the body of a demon. And he took a body of a demon, huge, Vritrasra. And Vritra means someone who can cover the whole universe, like he can swallow the universe. You know? So anyway, this battle takes place. And Indra, he's got this invincible thunderbolt now. So he's fighting him, and, you know, there's this beautiful painting. I remember the artist. And Indra, you know, has thrown his thunderbolt, and, and Vritra just catches it like it's a little toothpick. You know, you can see the, the painting. Is a little <laughs> but eventually Indra, you know, he's... he's he, then Chitraketu, or Vitrasura, is then dying on the battlefield. And in that, in that death of throes, so to speak, he has these beautiful prayers. And they're so out of character of a demon. You know, he's this huge demon. His arms and legs are cut off. He's bleeding out, you know. But he's just very calmly chanting these beautiful prayers. Aham hare tava parai kamula dasanu dasa babidas mi buya monak putsmare ta supate grunang ste grunita bakarma karoti kaya You know, <laughs> so out of character. So he says, Aham hare, oh hare, aham hare tava parai kamula when will I become servant of the servant of your beautiful lotus feet again? You know? Dasa anu dasa, bhavatas mi buya. Then in that, then when I do that, then my mind will always remember your beautiful pastimes and your name. Madeta du putang guna, asu o lord of my life, patera gunang, your, and your qualities. Monaks madeta du putang gunang, say, gunita va karma kadotukaya. And my voice, I will always be chanting your activities like that. So this is, and, and he's, he's, you know, big demon bleeding out and says, oh, I feel just like a little bird out of the nest, you know, please come and get it. It's just <laughs> really remarkable prayers. So Chichiketo goes back to Godhead. Vitrasa is no more. And then Indra has committed this grave sin and his sinful reactions start following him. Like some, it's like some tubercular old lady, you know, is following him. <laughs> That's where it's described like that in the, in the Bible. And so he's running, running, running. Then he has to hide within a big lake, uh, and, and, you know, like, the, like you see in the old movies of the 50s, and he's under the water and he's breathing through a straw. But it's like for a thousand years, you know. <laughs> so, so Indra, you know, he, he just keeps re reaping the results of his uh, activities. So, so anyway, Chipram Bhavati Dharma Mahat, so he, so he asked uh, Arjun to declare it. 
And uh, so that means that it, 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 he will keep the promise. It means that he, you know. So he, this means that Krishna is always ready to welcome us back. After all, we've been many millions of births far from his lotus feet. And if we turn to his lotus feet, naturally it may be a little bit difficult and to keep so strictness all the time, 24 hours a day. So he's ready to forgive, provided that you're sincere, provided that you really want to straighten up and you pray from the bottom of your heart. And if, if you then, then Krishna will forgive. That's the whole thing. It's a very important verse. And the next one is even more important. Okay. Mami part of the Pashritya. Ye pisu papi yonia. Strio by shas to tashu dras. Tapianti param getim. Okay, now before we read this translation, I must tell you that this translation has been revised according to what Prabhupada originally typed uh, or spoke, or I think at this point he's uh, dictating. And uh, so here's the new translation. Oh, and just, just to let you know, the commentator, Balare Bijabushan and all of them, Prabhupada did not, uh, I'll, I'll go over it when we finish it. So here's what the translation reads. O son of Prita, those who take shelter in me, though they, though they be, uh, let's see, okay. Though, uh, o son of, those who take shelter in me, though they be lowborn women, Vaishas, merchants, and uh, or shudras, uh, comma, can attain the supreme destination. There's four separate categories there: the lowborn, the women, the Vaishas, and the shudras. Not one overarching category, and all of them fit into it. It doesn't make any sense, really, because Vaishas. I mean, women are are all lowborn. Is Kunti automatically lowborn? You see what I'm saying? They're exalted, very exalted souls, and and Gandhari and so many others. So, and especially look in the word by words in this papionia, born, you know, it really means born of sinful, you know, right? That's not so. And, and then you've got the Vaishas there who can get second thread, they can get second initiation and everything. So it's four separate categories the low born, the women, the Vaishas, uh, the Shudras. Uh, uh, even they can attain the supreme destination because they take shelter of me, purport. It is clearly declared here by the Supreme Lord that in devotional service there is no distinction between the lower and higher classes of people. In the material conception of life there are such divisions, but for a person engaged in transcendental devotional service to the Lord there are not. Everyone is eligible for the supreme destination. In the Srimad Bhagavatam 2.4.18 it is stated that even the lowest, the lowest who are called chandalas or dog eaters can be purified by association with a pure devotee. And I think that's that famous verse, Kirata Hunandra Purinda Pulkasha, Abhira Shumba, Javanaka Sharya, Yenya Chapapa, Yadapashriyashriya, Shudyandi Tasmai Prabhavishnavenama. So this is a list of all kind of outcasts. These are, you know, kiratas or those, they don't live in, in, in Bharata Basha. It's like, uh, those, you know, they, they're in Europe or they're in Asia, or they're far from India. But even they can be purified by taking shelter of a pure devotee. That's the idea. Therefore, devotional service and the guidance of a pure devotee are so strong that there is no discrimination between the lower and higher classes of men. Anyone can take to it. The most simple man... Taking shelter of a pure devotee can be purified by proper guidance, and it's obvious from the from the the, the, the verse itself that it includes women. Okay, any human being. Man means human being. According to the different modes of material nature, human beings are classified in the mode of goodness, Brahmins; the mode of passion, Kshatriyas or administrators; the mixed modes of passion and ignorance, Vaishyas or merchants; and the mode of ignorance, Shudras or workers. Those lower than them are called Chandalas, and they are born in sinful families. Generally, the association of those born in sinful families is not accepted by the higher classes. But the process of devotional service is so strong that the pure devotee of the Supreme Lord can enable people of all the lower classes to attain the higher perfection of, highest, highest perfection of life. This is possible only when one takes shelter of Krishna. As indicated here by the word Vyapashritya, one has to take shelter completely of Krishna, then one can become much greater than the great jnanis and yogis. So this is an extremely important verse because this is the mood of Lord Chaitanya's movement, is that uh, there's no, no restriction. 
Remember that verse, second verse of the Shikshastika? Nam nam akari bohudani de sarva shaktis. Tatra pitani yamitak smadane nakalaha. Eta dushita bakripa bhagavan mamapi durdai vimidusha mahajinana nuraga. Krishna Govinda and Keshava too, your names have no end, and in each of them you have invested your potencies, leaving none out. Whenever we want, we can chant them without the slightest restriction of time or of place. O Lord, who can fathom your infinite grace, but I am so wretched, devoid of all shame, that I haven't developed a taste for your name. Now, without the slightest restriction of time or of place, or of candidate, that's understood also. It means that anyone, anytime, anywhere can chant these names and be purified. It, well, it, it, there's only one prerequisite, faith. You have to have some faith or you're not going to try it. So how do you get that faith? By associating with the faithful, by those who have experienced it. That's this Prabhupada's great genius. The most valuable thing he gave us was himself, was his own association. Bhagavat Sangi Sangasya. Here's a nice verse for you. This verse appears twice in the Bhagavatam, but you know it's an important verse. It's the importance of association with a, an associate of the Lord. It's called Bhagavat Sangi Sangasya. A Sangi is someone who's associating with something. Sangha is the association. So Bhagavat is the Lord. Bhagavat Sangi Sangasya. Tuliyama lave napi naswagam napana bhavam Bhagavat Sangi Sangasya martyanam kimutasya. Tuliyama means equal. Tuliyama lave napi, even a moment's, a half a moment's association with a Bhagavad Sanghi, a, a direct associate of the Lord, a pure devotee of the Lord, uh, is way more valuable than going to heaven. Puliyama Lame Naswargam. Swarga is heaven. Indraloka. Na Punarbhavam means not coming back. Liberation. It's much more valuable than liberation or, go, what to speak, of going to heaven. Sangha uh, Martyam. The association of an associate of the Lord. What to speak of ordinary material benedictions on this plane, you know, on the world of death. So that, that association of the why is it so potent? Because the great devotees in Lord Chaitanya's line are also are all completely uh, fixed on spreading the message of the Lord, following the Lord's mood of uh, trying to spread his name and, and benediction as far and wide as possible. And as Lord Chaitanya famously predicted, that throughout this world, through, in every town and village, what to speak of the big cities, my name will be chanted. And, and, and for, for you know, 500 years, everyone thought, well, that must refer to Varsha, it must refer to India. You know? Because Lord Chaitanya didn't leave India. No. <laughs> but if you can leave India, it, but he did say that it, there's no restriction. So Prabhupada, taking that seriously, came to New York City and uh, struggled for you know, about a year before he really got traction. And then he got some material some because he believed so much in the Holy Name. Because he was so pure and he was, he was so influential that people took up this process in full time, giving up illicit sex, gambling, and, and uh, the other sinful activity. So that's, uh, that's the idea that, that where the purification can take, take place. And thus anyone in any birth with the, the sincerity born of some association with pure devotee. And that's the two, twofold edge or the twofold sword, if you will, of the, the internet and all of these other media we have, which couldn't have been, weren't even dreamed about in Prabhupada's time. You know, that you can, you can, go, you can associate, or you can hear lectures, you can be in festivals, you can have classes, you know, a thousand mile difference, you know, 10,000 mile difference. So, so that's a great boon, really, of the, of the electronic media. But there's also a great danger, because you can also just, your whole destiny depends on what keys you hit, isn't it? What, what thumb, what do you do? <laughs> this is your destiny, you're making it. <laughs> you get onto that site, you go to hell. You get onto that site, you go back to Godhead. <laughs> But, but the, you know, anyone can read Papa's books at the database I.O., right? So most of you know you can read all the books, you know, which is great, which means you can get the association of Krishna and his pure devotee. So 
That's what it takes. Anyone, if they take shelter of me, the whole point, is that they take shelter of me or though one of them has taken shelter of me. All right, it's getting late. Any questions, comments on these? We'll finish the chapter t- uh, tomorrow, for sure. All right, I've left a little time for a little poetry. So, let's see. I think we should do the shikshastika. We have we have time. No, let me let me do the. It's a little short. This is the this is the kabalashtika. Eight verses about the holy name, by uh, Nila Kanta Goswami. We didn't know who wrote this for many years, but he is an associate of, of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Now, just a word. These are eight verses, but it's eight verses excerpted from a hundred verses that he wrote about the holy name. And then maybe it's Bhaktivinoda who pulled these eight out as his own favorite. So I'll just do one, Eng- one Sanskrit and, and then the English poem and then just the rest of English. Madaram madare biopi, mangale biopi, mangalam, bhavanam, bhavane biopi, hare nama evakevalam. Of sweet things, it's the sweetest you will taste at any time. Of things that bring good fortune, it's the perfect paradigm. Of things that purify, it purifies most powerfully. The holy name of Shri Hari is surely all that be. From Brahma's realm atop the sky, down to the lowly grass, illusion reigns in Maya Devi's treacherous morass. The truth, the truth, the only truth, the name of Shri Hari. The holy name of Shri Hari is surely all that be. He's the guru, he's the father, he's the friend most true. And she's the real mother who most kindly teaches you to always chant and hear the holy name of Shri Hari. The holy name of Shri Hari is surely all that be. And this is my favorite. Remember that our final breath may come at any time, no matter if we're old and sick or in our youthful prime. So young and old alike should chant the name incessantly. The holy name of Shri Hari is surely all that be. Lord Shri Hari forever dwells wherever devotees whose hearts are fixed on him and free of all impurities uplift their voices high and sing his name in ecstasy. The holy name of Shri Hari is surely all that be. Alas, what sorrow, what great pain, the worst calamity. For people to forget the holy name of Shri Hari. Although the name's a priceless gem, mere broken glass they see. The holy name of Shri Hari is surely all that be. Just fill your ears, just fill them with the name of Shri Hari. Just chant the name, just chant the name with all sincerity. Just sing the name, just sing the holy name eternally. The holy name of Shri Hari is surely all that be. It makes this world appear like bits of straw upon the ground. Resplendently it reigns supreme, divinity and sound. It's filled with transcendental bliss and peerless purity. The holy name of Shri Hari is surely all that be. So that was eight verses, then I wrote a little ninth verse. Inspired to glorify the holy name of Shri Hari, Shri Nila Kanta wrote this hymn in Sanskrit poetry. I pray that those who hear this lowly version made by me will chant the holy name of Shri Hari in ecstasy. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> That's one of my... There was, a, there was a great devotee who used to live here named Mahavishnu Swami. Some of you may know um, Subhadra. She's a disciple of his. And uh, he did amazing things. He took sannyas and then he, he went to Dwarka. He just sat under a tree with one disciple and gradually got donations. And after some time he built a whole temple there and started a yatra in Dwarka, the original Dwarka. So... Uh, Anyway, he was, he was very fond of this. I heard from some of his disciples in Denver when I visited there that he, he, he loved to hear this and he was hearing it even as he was lying ready to get ready to disappear. You know, he was hearing this, this uh, poem that I wrote. So I always remember him when I chant that one. Okay, all glorious Prabhupada. Let's do some, fill our ears with the holy name of Shri Hari.